First of all, I want to say thank you to everyone that has bought training and thank you to the people who are about to buy training. And once again, shout out to the Nerd Tribe for your well-constructed comments. If you notice, the content has changed. Today's video is why cash was never trash. If you've been watching the YouTubes, you have seen a multitude of videos telling you that cash is trash. You should take your money out the bank. And I feel that information is misguided. I feel that information is wrong because who is going to win during a recession? Who's going to win during the global reset? People with cash. Let me tell you a story. I recently got some business credit and I was talking to the underwriter because I'm trying to get data points. And the reason that they gave me a hundred thousand dollar line of credit was because I had a hundred thousand dollars in the bank. Now, Graham Stephan, meet Kevin, uh, whiteboard finance, all have videos talking about cash is trash. Let me go ahead and tell you something about these guys. Number one, they have a utility that you don't have. YouTube. Graham Stephan, meet Kevin, whiteboard finance, make a ton of money from YouTube telling you, in my opinion, pedestrian financial advice that's not going to work in the current economic climate in the current monetary policy. They're not critical thinkers. They're financial, personal finance entertainers. Not one of them has shown you a pay stub, a bank statement, none of that. All they do is put out information to trigger the YouTube algorithm to put more money in their pockets. And I'm not saying that's bad, but what I'm saying is that doesn't help you survive the global reset. Right now, we have a ton of people who are going, who are being reset. They were in the house. They moved to an apartment. They were in the apartment. They moved to a van. They were in the van. They went to homeless because they don't understand these economic principles that are very important to surviving the global reset and surviving recession. All right, I've put out here several times on this YouTube channel, if you did not have money above and beyond what you need to live on, there was nothing you could do to protect or prepare your money for the recession. Because all of the money that you make from your job, your, your business, whatever, you need that money to live, and that money is being exposed to inflation. So let's go ahead and talk about Warren Buffett. Now, this is one of the things. Warren Buffett is considered to be the greatest investor of our time. Warren Buffett has been sitting on billions of dollars of cash. Apple has been sitting on billion dollars of cash. Microsoft has been sitting on billion dollars of cash. Yet you have all of these YouTubers who are telling you that cash is trash and that you should deploy it into the stock market, because the stock market for the last 11 years has been on an upward trend. Now that the stock market is on a downward trend, once again, shout out to Joseph Hoag, Bowtie Nation, who's the only one that put out some guidance about not buying on the dip because he is an older gentleman. He's been through this before, and this is looking like something distinctly different something that looks different, that tastes different, feels different. We're in for a protracted downward pressure of the stock market. We're going into, we're, once again, let's go ahead and say it. We're in a recession. We're not, you know, I, I saw some guidance talking about a recession is 100% assured for 2023. We're already in a recession. Now, who are making moves or is the people, once again, we don't have a liquidity crisis at the moment. 
you can get credit. Recently, I bought a Porsche and the dealership was packed. Let me go ahead and explain to you what was happening. Uh, I was talking to my salesman. What's going on? My name is Glendon Cameron, and I want to introduce you to the corporate game. What is the corporate game? The corporate game is a collegiate level educational portal that will teach you how to have your best version of your life. I got a question. What would you do if you had the money that you needed to have the life that you wanted to have? And for the average American, an additional $3,000 per month makes a huge, huge difference. So this is the collegiate level corporate game, teaching you things about business, money, corporate structures, business credit, all of that, plus a lot more. Now, here is the deal. You can start a business. You can do it with the right level of training and the right level of execution. And here's the thing that you have to understand. Starting this business is going to take time. I know that we are in a situation where every day you're hit over the head with information saying that you can take this course, you can hack this, and you can literally quit your job in 30 days. This isn't that. You can do it, but it's going to take time. And one of the things is, and this is something that I never hear anyone talking about, is that you have to change who you are to go ahead and to set up a situation where you can become a corporate citizen. And what's a corporate citizen? A corporate citizen is a person through a job or a combination of businesses that makes $250,000 per year. At this level, you can get rich. You can become a millionaire within 10 years following this blueprint. And that's what we give you in the corporate game, what it is and how to play. So if you want to sign up, if you want to be a millionaire within the next 10 years, Go ahead, sign up for the corporate game. The link is in the first comment. And essentially due to the pandemic and the supply chain shortages, uh, my car came in Friday night and a, a bunch of other cars came in and all these people were coming in to pick up their cars. And one of the things I noticed was I was started talking to some of the other people in there. I wasn't talking to employees. I was talking to other business owners. This was who was in here on a Saturday night getting their Porsches, business owners, not the average person, not the stock market investor. These people were not at the dealership. It was business owners. And I had a wonderful conversation with someone who owned a painting company. And this is what he told me. He said, we've been so busy. And he said, the biggest challenge that I have is not getting business. It's finding employees. And I was like, once again, and I said, these millennials and Gen X people, they don't want to work. They all want to be TikTokers. They all want to be YouTubers. He says he's got a guy who does TikTok and YouTube who works for him. And this guy asked him for permission to do videos on the job. And he said, sure. And he's like, this guy literally has one foot outside the door because his TikTok and YouTube channels are taken off. I was like, all right, let me go ahead and explain something to you. I do YouTube. And once you get a taste of that YouTube money, I mean, I want you to really think about this. I don't know how you got started in your business, but if you can make six figures from the comfort of home, that becomes addictive. And once they start to make this kind of money from home with no special training, no education, no student loans, 
it becomes a very hard thing to resist. And he says, I see it with him because, you know, when he first started working with the company five years ago, he was hardworking. And every time I see him, I could just see that he's about to leave. And I said, once his YouTube revenue gets to a certain point, he is gone. And this is, you know, good for him. Good for him. But here's the thing. Cash was never trash. I have consistently put here on YouTube that I have a lot of money in the bank. I've been saying that for years. I've never been one of these people to tell you, oh, I invest everything. I put everything into the stock market because here's the thing. And once again, going back to business owners, if you have a business, you have a financial device that literally reloads with cash every month. Unlike a stock, unless it's a dividend stock, unlike some type of exotic investment, unlike some type of crypto investment, it reloads every month. And one of the things that I've been preaching, and I've been trying to get you guys to understand this, that you can become rich through investments, but that is the slowest path to become rich. I've been an entrepreneur for 23 years. Now, if I was of the average person, an investor, and I had diligently and consistently invested in the stock market, I would just be entering the territory where I would start to be getting rich at 23 years versus enjoying living in a 5,000 square foot house, driving Porsches, BMWs, taking exotic vacations, enjoying my life. I would just be getting to the position of where I could be reaching the enjoyment stage of my money. I've been enjoying money since the age of 37-ish. I've been making six figures or more since I was 37 years of age. 37, three, yeah, 37 years of age. So I'm going to tell you something, and this is something you're not going to hear. When you get old, things change. Things change. You could be considered a good-looking 50-year-old, a good-looking 60-year-old, a good-looking 70-year-old, but you will not have the vigor, stamina, unless you really work out at a high level at these elder stages. So essentially, when you're getting your money, you're literally going to be falling apart, and you're not going to be able to enjoy your money. Uh, when I was doing the mail content, because like one of the reasons that um, I'm, con you know, I'm still reconsidering. I haven't posted any mail content in a while because going back to YouTube University, there's a bunch of content creators in the mail space that don't preach discipline. That there are some that do. But they don't preach discipline, hard work, getting your economics together. And essentially, I make way more money over here on the business side with less pulling because here, here's the thing. If you as a man had the ability to approach a woman, introduce yourself and ask her for her number, if you did that three times a week, your dating life would literally transform transform and because of these weak wet men that don't want to do it i'm like once again you know so i'm just going ahead and i'm refocusing my energy where i get the most dividends um that's what's kind of going on with that because i've gotten people it's like hey when are you going to post some on the mail channels and at the moment i'm not feeling that because People do not want to do the work, which kind of brings me back to cash is not trash. Once again, I have provided you evidence. I have provided you receipts that cash is not trash. Yet people are still listening to these folks who are talking about 
investments. I provided you receipts. I provided you transparency. Yet for some reason, and this is one of the reasons I feel that people want to believe in this pipe dream. Here's the fact, the statistical fact based upon math and numbers. The average person in the United States of America, single person income, $30,000 to $35,000 per year, doesn't make enough money to invest and become a millionaire in 20 or 30 years. Statistical fact, you don't make enough money to become a millionaire through investments unless we get into the 40 or 50 year time frames. Now, average life expectancy is roughly 78. So unless you started investing when you were a teenager, you don't have a long enough runway. And once again, cash is not trash, like I said. Um, one of the things I'm seeing here on YouTube is YouTube is starting to change. And I feel due to the recession, I feel to the pressure that so many people are facing, that people are coming to these YouTubers. They're trying to find solutions. They're trying to find answers to their questions. And they're actually applying this useless garbage advice. I think Graham Stephan puts out pedestrian, normal, average, everyday advice that is not going to make you statistically or statistically wealthier anytime soon. And people are starting to see that this advice is just what I consider financial entertainment. You know, it's good. Me, Kevin has a video. Invest $100 per month for retiring seven years. That sounds so amazing. That sounds like, yeah, that's something I can do. I can come up with a hundred bucks and I can invest it for seven years and then I can retire. Here's the thing. It's never going to happen. And to me, that is useful, useless, garbage, financial advice that is littering YouTube. And once again, I feel that YouTube is starting to change because this is one of the things that I watch is YouTube channels that do these quote side hustles. Once again, I am in, once again, I, I think I have a few videos talking about side hustles and I've gotten away from that because we need to be thinking small business. And what I am seeing is some of these channels, their views are starting to tank because people are listening to these YouTubers. They're trying to do their methodologies and they simply don't work. So I feel in 2023 and 2024, this channel is significantly going to explode because once again, cash isn't trash. Right now, I'm not feeling inflation. And I don't say that to brag or boast or rub my balls in your face. I'm just saying that as a statistical fact that when I go get gas, I couldn't tell you the price of gas because I don't look. I just put my credit card in, fill my tank going about my business. And you, if you would apply these principles of hard work, service, creating a business, that would be your life as well. Not investing. You know, there's something, uh, and this is something that I've recently done. Everything, every channel that pisses me off because they're putting out bullshit advice. I've hit those little dots so much that YouTube is like, it was giving me not interested. Now it's giving me don't recommend this type of content because I've hit that because uh, I recently in my community section, uh, Monique Hinton put out a video that's 100% false. I actually have expertise and experience in Amazon self-publishing. That's how I made my first million. And you're not going to stick a book or a low content book or a medium content book on Amazon, do little or no work and make a lot of money. You can make you could put something. <clears throat> um, you can um, make a few hundred bucks at best with low content books, coloring books. Here's the thing. And I'm about to give you some wisdom and insights from someone who understands business. Organic search on Amazon is 
practically dead. So if you just go ahead and put a whole bunch of low content books on Amazon, you, you might make a few hundred bucks. You might make that, but you're not going to make a livable income, which Monique is indicating. Make $5,000 a month self publishing self and low content books on Amazon. It's simply not true. It's simply not true. It's a complete another bullshit. Only reason that I made so much money on Amazon is this YouTube channel and the storage auction shows. I had commercials running for my book. I, you know, and I'll be honest, I didn't make that much money just using this YouTube channel. 62,000 my first year, 92,000 my second year, the third year, the YouTube, uh, the, the storage auction show channels are like taken off. And every time someone came to the internet, they found this YouTube channel, they found my blog, the urban pack rat, and they found my book for a significant time. I was the only one that was providing storage auction, how to training and this channel was put in into existence to promote my book. So if you have a book on Amazon and it's not something that's being recommended by a course, like um, there's this good and evil in the midnight garden, or some, this book is, is part of college curriculum. So this is why this book continues to sell because there are people who are looking for it because it's part of a college curriculum. But if you just stick a book up on you on Amazon and just hope and pray that it sells without any promotion, uh, good luck to you because you're not going to make a lot of money. You could take that to the bank. And this is one of the things like, you know, just to keep my blood pressure down, I'm just not consuming this bullshit, fake ass content that people create to make a lot of money on YouTube and actually leave you road hard and put up wet. That's what it does, because it, it doesn't help you. You're not going to make any money from this. And like I said, there's a few people I was following their tent. Their channels are starting to tank because people are like waking up that, hey, there is virtually no easy, effortless, no experience way for me to make a lot of money. There is just not. It's just not happening. And, you know, this once again, just like all of these felonious YouTube channels and these people who will tell you. That cash is trash. Cash was never trash. Anyone who's had a certain amount of cash has been able to facilitate and make moves in the marketplace that people without cash cannot do. They just simply could not do. And this this is one of the things, because like I said, a lot of people, you know, we're going to see who are the critical thinkings, because recently I posted um, what I've paid myself. I posted my pay stub. I posted how much money I have in the bank to show you, not to brag, not to boast, but to show you that my economic principles work in real time. These things actually work. And, you know, the people with cash are going to be the people who are going to ride this recession out just fine. Uh, the people with cash are going to ride the global reset out just fine. In fact, many of these people who have cash are going to get richer because they have cash. All of these hedge funds who are buying real estate, they're not buying real estate with credit. They're, riding, they're buying real estate with cash. That's what I call cash buyers. They're walking up and buying multiple hundreds or thousands of homes with cash. They're not financing. They're not getting bank loans. Some of these hedge funds may have gotten a large infusion or some type of loan from another large financial institution. So that's going on. But the reality is you want to get yourself some cash. Now, I'm about to give you some wisdom, insights and guidelines. Let's say you're the average person. How much cash on hand do you need? If you are a single person making between 30 and $50,000 per year, you need to have $30,000 cash money in the bank, not in your 401k, not in investments, but you need to have $30,000 cash constituting your long-term emergency fund, your short-term emergency fund, 
and your family operating account. If you are making 100K, you need 50 to $100,000 cash in the bank. And if you are making a million a year, you need to have a million cash in the bank. These are the guidelines because the more you make, the more cash you should have because here, here's something else. Like, once again, I'm not trying to be dismissive. I'm not trying to uh, rub salt in the wounds of people, but I'm going to show you something. This is, it's a brand new MacBook Pro that, you know, I was selling stuff on eBay. I was running some tests and eBay has just turned into a total shit show. So this cost me like 1400 bucks. It's literally been sitting here on the floor. I'm at a level where I could deploy $400,000 and it doesn't change my life. I want you to understand, when I was in the rental car business, I paid cash for those cars. And I was able to deploy that money and still buy a Porsche, still move to a high rise, still eat steak. And I, I'm, once again, I'm not saying this to brag or to boast. I'm saying this to illustrate to you the importance for you to start a small business. Regardless of your education level, regardless of your background, that is gonna be the only thing available for you to scale up and develop wealth in your life in a meaningful way and to do it fairly quickly. Uh, we're getting ready to do some training, okay? And the training is going to be how to make you a millionaire in the next 10 years, not the next three months, not the next uh, year. But we're going to create a plan to f make you a millionaire, to create income, to create revenue, to create a lifestyle for you and your family within the next 10 years. I feel that the average person, if they become a corporate citizen, uh, I'm going to tell you a funny story about that. Uh, become a corporate citizen and gets to an income of $250,000 net. That's after taxes and expenses that at that level, you can become a millionaire through buying assets within six years of that point of reaching that income level. I want you, I'm talking about some powerful stuff. I'm talking about some powerful stuff. I'm not going to give you this rah-rah, hey, who here is going to be a millionaire next year? That's complete and utter bullshit. Once again, um, I, I've had a business, a very profitable business, that didn't make me a millionaire for almost 10 years. The business itself earned millions of dollars, and I earned millions of dollars, but from a statistical accurate and honest position, the storage auction business, when it was all said and done, I had $300,000 in the bank. I had some stuff that was left. I had liquidated my houses and I wasn't a millionaire. Wasn't a millionaire. And I had really good cash flow or had really good profit margins, but I wasn't a millionaire. And one of the things that I have learned on this entrepreneur journey because every year I learn something new. And right now I'm on a whole different wavelength, a different path. And we're going to put together this 10 year program to make you and your family millionaires, legit, real millionaires. And it starts with money management. Once again, this is why cash is not trash. This is why you need to have cash money in the bank. Inflation be damned. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. If you had $10 million cash money in the bank, $10 million, right? And you spent $100,000 a year. You could spend $100,000 a year for 100 years. If you had $10 million cash in the bank, not invested, 
just spent your cash, you would die before you spend all that cash at 100,000. You would die. You would die. So all this noise and nonsense is coming from people who are not real strategists, who are not real technicians, because if they were real technicians and they were real strategists, they would tell you the truth that you need to have some cash money in the bank. Once again, cash has never been trash. I don't care what Grant Cardone says. I don't care what Graham Stephan says. I don't care what Meek Kevin says. Because, you know, Grant, to a degree, is a tactician and an operator, but he's also a social media star. Undercover billionaire. I find that ludicrous because at the time he did that, he wasn't a billionaire. So, from a marketing standpoint, Grant Cardone is at times full of shit, um, but he is savvy. He's wealthy. He's, you know, I would estimate his net worth to be around 400 million, which is amazing. I'm going to tell you something. If you can get to a net worth of a hundred million dollars in your lifetime, you have done amazing. You, you have become I mean, what what you have could have accomplished, like literally, if you can get to a net worth of 30 million, you've done amazing. 10 million. You've done amazing. And this whole thing that you need to be a billionaire. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I'm tell you something. I'm going to get a little personal here. I have the life that I want to lead. I live where I want to live. I drive where I want to drive. I'm in a wonderful relationship. I am living my best life and I'm not a billionaire. I don't even I don't even need to be a billionaire. And honestly, what I'm going to uh, spend, um, what I'm going to spend per year ain't even close to a million to live this life. I ain't even close to it. Ain't even close to it. So one of the things that you need to understand and one of the things that you need to get through your skulls is there's virtually nothing outside of hitting crypto just right or hitting some tactic just right where you're going to actually be able to make significant money with little effort. Just get that out your mind. Just let that go. Because when you understand money from a tactician standpoint, when you understand money from a practical application standpoint, you will begin to see through these misrepresentations of the truth. You will begin to understand that cash has never been trash. Tell, like, once again, years and years ago, Fred Trump wrote Donald Trump a check for about three, four million from his bank. This man had millions of dollars in the bank. And if you can go back to old school wealth, old school wealth had cash. Old school wealth had durability. Old school wealth had significant level of class and access that this new school wealth that's predicated on stock market wealth that's predicated on non-cash wealth, that's predicated on non-liquidity wealth, is not the same and it's not as strong. It's just not as strong. So once again, cash is not trash. Cash is not um, trash. It's just not. So if you can understand that and you can embrace that, because once again, those who have cash are going to weather this recession just fine. Those who have cash are going to weather this global reset just fine. And it's going to be interesting to see what these people, because here, here's something else too. You know, the show Friends was quite successful for a long time and then people lost interest. 
At some point, people are going to lose interest in Graham Stephan. At some point, people are going to lose interest in uh, Meet Kevin. At some point, people are going to lose interest in Grant Cardone. Now, I feel that because they're putting money away, they're going to be just fine. But what's going to happen to all of these people who are following this felonious advice? They're not saving up cash. They're not building anything. What's going to happen to them? They're going to perish. They're going to be globally reset. That's what's going to happen to them. So once again, you're hearing it for someone who's in the streets, who's building businesses, who's doing all these things, that cash is not trash, not even close to trash.